All right, Fisherholic, so today I'm out here on the north side of Montauk Point, and I'm about to launch the kayak out, and I'm gonna do some trolling with the umbrella rig. You know, today is June 3rd, so the umbrella rig is a key presentation to use in the kayak for trolling for striped bass and bluefish in the early season, or the month of June and July. So uh, I'm about to launch the kayak and go out, but let me just give you a quick look at my umbrella rig so uh, you have an idea of how I'm rigging it and uh, basically what I'm using. So this is basically my umbrella rig, or these are the spreader arms. And uh, let me just show you on the top here what I got. I got four little teasers that I made and dyed myself for the top part here of the umbrella rig. And these obviously are teasers, so they're not meant for catching fish. But then on the end of each four arms, I have a barrel swivel attached to a clip. And the reason for that is because when this gets really tangled, then you can basically just very quickly remove the clip and then you basically can untangle it you know a lot easier than if it's tied, tied direct to the end of the spreader arm or if it's just you know attached by a barrel swivel so I attach a little clip and uh, then I have my four tubes here and they're all on at different lengths this one here is the longest then I have the second longest then I have the third longest and then I have the shortest one and this is 80 pound monofilament the lightest I will usually go when I'm trolling an umbrella rig is probably around 40 pound fluorocarbon monofilament. I usually use monofilament when you know using my umbrella rigs because um, you know you're using a lot of line. You know, and fluorocarbon is expensive. Monofilament's cheap. So you know when you're using monofilament and you're fishing deep water off the lighthouse or just deep water in general, it really doesn't matter. You know, when you think about it, you have these metal arms here. If they're hitting the baits and you have metal arms trolled above your lure like this, they're obviously not really that interested in the line. They're pretty much just looking at the presentation or the motion of the bait. So you could probably get away with 50 pound mono to 100 pound mono and still catch fish. It's the beginning of the incoming tide right now, great conditions. I'm gonna head out and uh, hopefully get into some fish. So let's make something happen, let's do it. got a lot of waves in front of me here very dangerous don't try this at home Woo! Woo -hoo! Oh. Woo! that pretty much soaked me from head to toe don't try this at home or off Montauk Lighthouse unless you know what you're doing Gotta get over this next wave coming. Gotta pedal my butt off. Whoa, it's gonna be like hitting a ramp. Woohoo! <laughs> I love it. So basically, I'm working my way up front right now. It's the last, you know, hour and a half hour of the incoming tide, which is when the bass, you know, seem to be biting. And uh, I have three goals today basically to come out here and catch a lot of nice striped bass make a great video for you guys so you can learn a few things on how to troll and catch fish with umbrella rigs in the kayak and then third catch some striped bass for the fam i usually don't harvest that many striped bass you know personally because you know i like to just throw them back and as well because i work on the a to k out here in montauk you know i always have fish at my fingertips so i basically just you know if i ever need any you know someone gives me some or i cut the cheeks out and uh, you know i get a little portion and then i usually just fry that up but uh, my dad's been begging me for you know some striped bass and my mom's out here for a day, day and a half. So I'm gonna try and get a 28 inch or something, something nice and sweet, uh, you know, so the fam can enjoy some fresh fish at home. Oh, fish on. Nothing too big. Might be a bluefish. Oh, he decided to pull hard right when he gets to the boat. Not a bad blue. After catching that blue, I decided to put the rod down for a second, or actually more for like 10, 15 minutes. And I'm gonna work my butt off to get up tide. 
you know, I want to be as close to that rip where it starts to pick up as I can. You know, I'm going to be right behind it or right in front of it. I really haven't decided where I'm going to exactly go yet. But if I keep trolling too far back behind the front of the rip or where the rip starts, I'm probably going to keep getting bluefish and then I'm going to keep getting sucked back, you know, in and I'm never gonna be by those bass. So I have to put the rod down, even though I probably can catch fish right here and uh, pedal my butt off. You know, I'm probably pedaling hard enough to go four or five miles per hour, but I'm only going, you know, half a mile an hour to around uh, 1.5, you know, maybe two if a big swell pushes me. So I'm not moving that fast, but I'm really working hard. <laughs> really strong current today, man. I'm actually pulling off of my attempt to try and get up tide up front. The current was just way too strong and I'm losing daylight. So I'm going to uh, hit the front side or the closest front side of the elbow and uh, hopefully find some fish there. There he is, fish on. That's a pretty good one. That's a good fish. Very good fish, guys, right here. It's probably a big blue, I'm thinking. Feels like a big blue. Or maybe a couple blues, more than one. Definitely. Definitely, I think it's more than one blue. If this is one big blue, it's gonna be a pretty big one. I don't even think this is that big of a bluefish. This fish is just pulling hard. Oh! Oh no, it is a pretty big one. That's a monster, that's a chopper. I'm gonna try out my Berkeley cheap Boga grip and uh, see how it works out. I've had it for like five years and never used it after losing my boga grip in the drink. Let's see if this works. A lot of times the cheap imitation boga grips, they open up when you try and put it in a fish's mouth. Got him. <laughs> I got him by a thread. All right, I got him with the Berkeley boga. That's a chunk right there. All right, let's get him back in the water. There he goes. All right, so no bass so far, but, you know, I might settle for a small cocktail blue if I can't get that keeper bass, but I'm going to keep trying. Still got plenty of daylight left. You know, the tide's going to start slowing down a little bit, so it'll give me more opportunities to uh, fish more locations out here once the tide lightens up a little bit. And then I'm hopefully going to catch that bass that I need real quick and head in before the tide starts going out, because I don't want to be trapped in this outgoing tide once the tide starts going out. Let's catch some more fish. Moved over to Jones Reef right now. Looking for a few bass on Jones's. Usually there's a few sitting on Jones's, willing to bite. Just hooked up with a really good fish here at Jones's Reef. It might be another big blue, but it could be a bass. This fish hit like a bass. I just turned the camera off, and man, I got a good hit. Oh, another big blue. Oh gosh. He decided to dig for the bottom at the last second. Oh, another monster chopper. Oh boy. Oh boy. I deal with a lot of bluefish working on the A to K. I'm going to show you a technique I use when picking them up. If you pick them up by the tail, what you do is you bend the tail like this. See how they don't flip? Then you grab them. Nice little technique that I figured out, you know, after catching and dealing with a lot of bluefish day in and day out. It's probably an easy 31 incher. Not too fat, real skinny, but nice fish. 
Woo! All right, I still gotta find some bass though. Nice fish though, not bad, I'm not complaining. They weaken the arms a little bit. <laughs> There he is, that's the bass I needed. That's the bass right there, guys, right there. I think it's a bass. Oh, that fish is pulling hard. Oh, please don't be a big blue, please don't be a big blue. I think that's the bass. No! He came off. No, he's on there. Oh boy swimming towards me. I think he came, I thought he came off. Ugh. Might be, might be two fish. There's definitely two fish on there. Oh, I think there was two bass on here. It was so heavy. One definitely fell off and then he was swimming towards me. Oh, this might be the biggest bass of the season from the yak right here, guys. Oh, that's why. I think I have a bass and a blue. I think I have a bass and, no, double header bass. Woo! This is gonna be a sweet pick right here. <laughs> and I was just on my final pass of the day. Oh. This is gonna be a pretty sweet, uh, sweet picture. Okay. Woo! Got the keeper right there. Look how fat that one is. Look how fat. Here comes the second one. <laughs> He's not in my hands yet. He's not in my hands. Oh, caught these two fish on Jones Reef. Woo! Two bass and one pass right there. Woohoo! You gotta love that. You've gotta love that. Oh, woo! You've gotta love two bass like that. Look at this fat one in my right hand. Woo! Gonna get a sweet picture and get this little guy back in the water. And sorry, baby, this uh, this baby right here is gonna be dinner. Woohoo! Really fat fish, really fat. Woo! I'm gonna let this little guy go, and there the little guy goes. And uh, you know this fat guy right here, or girl, is uh, you know gonna be some good dinner. And uh, I'm kind of happy she's not, you know, a really really large fish, you know. This fish looks like, you know, she's maybe around, you know, 18 pounds or so. You know, so a good, you know, size eating striped bass. You know, not too much on the larger side because I like to throw back the big breeders. And the smaller fish usually taste a little bit better. So if you're thinking about keeping any striped bass for dinner, always remember that the smaller fish taste better. And, uh, you know, the big female or the big breeders, you know, the big, real big fish, you know, 30 pounds, 25 pounds and up, you know, those fish, you know, should be released because, you know, you know, they're going to give us more striped bass to have more fun and, uh, you know, they don't taste as well. All right, Fishaholic, so I'm working my way back. Got about a half mile pedal back to the beach and luckily I caught the very end of the incoming tide so I really don't have to kill myself to get back. But uh, I put my bass here on the stringer, keeping them nice and fresh and hopefully my family will be happy and uh, will enjoy some nice fresh striped bass, which uh, they really don't get that often because usually I throw them back. <laughs> and, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me come out here and catch some, you know, nice sized bluefish and as well, you know, get lucky in my opinion, catching two double header striped bass on my last pass. You know, that was really lucky because for a while out here on the water, I was questioning myself whether or not I was gonna get that, you know, that bass bite. You know, after playing catch and release for a couple hours with, you know, some big bluefish and, uh, you know, killing myself on the current out here, I was really uh, questioning myself. But, um, you know, in my opinion, great way to end the evening or end the day. It was raining and, you know, real crummy all day. And now the sky's opening up and, uh, 
I've got about a half a sunset there, which uh, you know is all pink and purple, so it's pretty cool. But um, if you have any more questions about today's video, just look in the description below or post the comment in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And never forget, live to fish, fish to live. I'll see you guys out on the water.